Hello AP Calculus AP students, Mr. Record here with our third and final video that's going to cover topic 6.1, all about exploring accumulations of change. And like I said before, the purpose of this particular uh, lesson, topic 6.1, is just to get you guys introduced to all the various things that you're going to be able to do throughout your journey in Unit 6 in your AP Calculus AP class. And this particular problem is one of my personal favorites because it features my favorite pop artist. Perhaps you've heard of them, Sir Isaac and the New Tones. And the problem that we're going to look at revolves around one of their current singles that's just been released to all the major streaming services. And we're going to take a look at all of the different downloads that this particular single has undergone over a 10 week period of time. So let's take a look at Sir Isaac and the New Tone. So here we are. The new pop music group sensation Sir Isaac and the New Tones have released their latest single on all the major music streaming services. During its first 10 weeks of release, the rate of the number of downloads per week in thousands of units is modeled by this function D of T, whose graph is shown to the right. How many total downloads were purchased during this 10 week period? That's the question that we need to answer. Now, one thing that you want to make sure that you're very comfortable with is the fact that this function, this graph given to you, D of T, may not look like a derivative. It may not look like a rate. It doesn't have a prime attached to it. It doesn't have any other kind of derivative notation attached to it. But we have to think of this as being a rate. We have to think of it as being a derivative. That's really important. Because we've learned something about whenever we're given a rate and we're asked to find a total amount, which is what's going on with this problem, is that we can basically take the two dimensions. We've got downloads per week and week as our two axes labels. And we know that if we multiply those two phrases together, our answer would be in downloads, which is what we're trying to answer here. And what better way to multiply two dimensions of a graph than finding the area underneath the curve and above this horizontal axis. So that is exactly what we're going to do. We basically need to concern ourselves with finding the area between this dashed line and this dashed line underneath that graph and above that horizontal axis. Now, it might not be the most comfortable, familiar geometric shape, and I get that, so we could chop this up a variety of ways. Maybe you want to do a little bit of a partition right about here when uh, the uh, weeks are four at four weeks. Well, that's perfectly fine. Then you could just simply say, okay, the area on the interval zero to four, just to kind of keep track of this, it's just simply the area of the rectangle that's four by three, which in this case would be 12. Now, you can make a statement there that during the first four weeks, we experienced 12,000 downloads, or at least Sir Isaac Newton, or, or Sir Isaac and the Newtones witnessed 12,000 downloads of their new smash hit single. But you can see that this rate, even though it declines a little bit for the next couple of weeks, people are starting to lose interest perhaps. And then all of a sudden it just takes off from week six to week 10 and has this wonderful increase in the rate at which people are downloading. So we're gonna keep working through this. Maybe we wanna stop and see what's happening at week six because the figure that we have between time four and time six is something that's a little familiar. Maybe you have forgotten that this is a trapezoid and that the trapezoid has a very special formula to it. We're going to be working a lot with trapezoids later on in this unit, so you want to start to kind of bring that back. But the area of a trapezoid is defined to be one half times the sum of the bases. Well, we have a base here that's three and a base here that's one. And so we're going to sum those two and then we multiply that by the height which is the distance along this way. You sort of have a trapezoid that's sitting on its side, so to speak. 
And so 1 half times 3 plus 1 times 2 is just simply 1 half of 4 times 2 or 1 half of um, 8. And we end up with 4 in that case. So we're going to finish this up by figuring out what is our downloads between 6 and 10 weeks. Because I figured 6 to 10 is a pretty good shape as to work with because it looks like we have another trapezoid. And as long as we have a nice geometric formula, we're going to be able to pull off that particular area fairly easily. So the area of that trapezoid would be 1 half times the sum of the bases, which is now 1. And then this one up here, which is going to be a 9. This distance here is, as you can see, a 9. And then the height of that particular trapezoid, 1, 2, 3, 4, is 4 units there along the side, basically 10 minus 6. And now we have 1 half of 10 times 4, 1 half of 40, which is 20. Now if I sum all of these together, 12 plus 4 plus 20, I end up with, what is that, 16 plus 20, 36. Now, of course, the answer would be in terms of thousands. So I can either say the word thousand or I can add those three zeros, whatever you want to do. But there are 36,000 downloads that were purchased in those 10 weeks. And again, it's all about finding the area under the curve when you're given the rate. Integrate the rate to get the total amount. I'm going to use that phrase a lot. The only problem is, is we're sitting there thinking right now, what, what does that word integrate mean? That's going to be put into a bit bigger perspective here in the days to come. Now, I want to finish off this video lesson by maybe revisiting our example too. And if you kind of go back, I'm going to take a page back here and look at this example too that I did in a previous video where we had this particle P that moved in this straight line with this constant velocity. And we talked about how you can find the total distance traveled by again, taking the area, right? Finding the area of this region below that curve. And again, geometry worked really well. And in fact, it didn't hurt us too bad in the Sir Isaac and the Newtone problem because we had this wonderfully shaped graph that was very conducive to finding the area using some known geometric formulas. But what if we revisit a situation similar to our example two? This time we have our good friend particle Q. Particle Q moves along a straight path as well. I don't know what that means. Particle cube moves along a straight path with. <laughs> it's just moving along a straight path, period. The graph of the velocity of particle Q at time t is shown to the left. And so as you can see, we don't have that constant velocity. This is a velocity that seems like it's increasing just ever so slightly over those two second time uh, period of time. How would one go about finding the total distance this particle traveled from time zero to time two seconds? Well, again, you would still find the area. That's not going to change, you guys. The philosophy behind these problems are always going to be the same. If we have this positive velocity here, we can find the total distance by finding the area underneath this curve. But the problem with that is how would we go about finding this particular area because of the fact that it's not very conducive to using geometry formulas. This curved part of this, uh, maybe it's a parabola, it's very likely what it is, is going to cause us some issues. So we're going to have to think of this in a little bit of a different light in the, in the days and weeks to come. And that situation that I've just presented to you really does bring into more focus what the topic 6.2 is about in our upcoming lessons. So anyway, I hope this kind of sets the stage for what's to come. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you at the next video.